so happy to be back here in the Ed Sullivan Theater where I can have in-person guests again. But there are... Here's the thing. There are still some times when someone I really want to talk to isn't able to be here in New York, which was the case with tonight's guest, Melissa McCarthy. Now, fortunately, The Late Show has been developing a revolutionary new technology that allows me and a guest to transport ourselves via the astral plane to some common location at the same time. It works like this. A high-intensity ray of energy tears our bodies apart at a cellular level, <laughs> then beams us into a virtual environment where we are grafted back together, atom by atom. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but you should also have pretty good Wi-Fi before you try this. <laughs> now, it's still in a trial phase, but Melissa has agreed to test it out with me tonight. So here we go. <clears throat> She is a two-time Emmy winner and Academy Award nominee. You know from Gilmore Girls, Bridesmaids, and Can You Ever Forgive Me? Her new film is called The Starling. I thought maybe we could go up to the lake again when you get home, you know, for the fourth. Sure. That's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be just like it was, like nothing ever happened. I didn't say that. No, no I know. I... No, but that is why I'm here, isn't it? I'm, I'm supposed to... Just go back to being my good old self and we can all get on with our lives. It's just gonna take time, that's all. No, don't, don't. Please. Man, you really think that time is gonna make all of this okay? It's gonna make us okay? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we can't stay here like this. This is not good. I know. But I don't know how I fit anymore. Jim, transfer me to Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Good Lord. Where's Melissa? That was odd. Melissa, thank you so much for, for being with me today. Thanks for, thanks for bringing me in. in Lo lovely to fashion. see you again. You too. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, down, 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 down. Oh. Yes! There you go. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Good to see you. Well, Melissa, let's, uh, let's make this a little more comfortable. That's nice. Oh. That's lovely. Wow. That's lovely. That is calming. You're always so lovely to talk to, you know, partly oh. because you're you and you're, and you're wonderful, <laughs> but you've got the nice DNA. You're from the Midwest. It's really true. What's your hometown? Plainfield, Illinois, the oh. Mecca. Okay, yeah, sure. It's a farm community, isn't it? Cor yeah, I grew up on a corn and soybean farm. Now, but you also spent a fair amount of time in Chicago, is my understanding. To my, once I hit high school, to my dad's horror, uh, he was like, I moved you out to a remote farm to keep you out of Chicago, because he grew up on the south side. Uh-huh. And, uh, and he goes, it's like, moths to a flame! Because I went, I started... Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. Gang. What did he say? <laughs> like, moths to a flame! I can't keep you out of the city. And I was like, what am I going to do in Plainfield? And then, so we would go downtown, and I started dressing very gothic. And we would go, there was Medusa's, which was like a juice bar that we went to every weekend. And I Berlin. went to Medusa's. <gasps> I went to Berlin. Did you dance on the scaffolding at Medusa's? Uh, no, but I did go to gay disco night on Wednesday nights <laughs> at Berlin. Everybody Her I knew who waited tables went there Wednesday, because that was the really fun night. I think to the point where the actual people who were there to gay disco had to find another night. Because <laughs> the rest was just going because that was the best night to go. Berlin, to, to this date, still might be my favorite bar. And there's just one... I don't remember how it happened. There might have been a few drinks involved. Um, but I do remember I was on this pedestal dancing and two drag queens took off one of my layers. I was still dressed, but then they put on kind of like a, a sundress, and they redressed me, and then I was like, this wow. is it. Now I'm living. How old are you when this is happening? Probably 16, 17. So you had to have a fake ID. <laughs> Did you make your own? Because uh, no. we, we, used to make, we used to make our own. You, where'd you get yours? Oh, I, my sister, Margie, was going to get a fake ID, and being the loving sister, I said, if you don't take me with you, I'll tell mom and dad. Well, good. <laughs> that, so that's what a younger me... sister should do, is snitch. 
But yeah. where, yeah, where well, do you go? Rat. Was there like, who was the vendor? I, <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure we went to U of I Circle Campus, which is in Chicago. Sure. And, and not the one in Champaign. And we went into some weird like dorm room and this guy had made a to scale, like a huge scale thing of a Illinois license plate, or I mean, driver's license. And then you just stood behind it. So it's like your name and everything was like huge. But when he took the picture and shrunk it down, it looked really good, but it was, it was not Illinois, it was Ohio. Oh, sure. To throw people off. Sure, no way a cop in Illinois would ever recognize an Ohio driver's license. No bouncer did until, and then I went and lived in Ohio for a summer and the first bouncer was like, because either, I can't remember, Ohio's was either bigger or smaller than an average driver's license and they didn't make it the right size. So they, they set up a whole racket to counterfeit things and nobody was like, uh, what are the overall dimensions? Like nobody bothered. So the first time I went to Ohio bar, the guy's like, are you kidding? And I was like, yeah, it's weird. Mine's a different size. And then he said, what's your sign? And I was like, I'm not really into signs. And he was like, yeah, get out of here before I call the cops. And I was like, can I have that card back? To which he said, no. Oh, no. So the smart thing, I just walked right out around the alley and crawled open over the fence to the beer garden. But did you say you had a goth phase? Yeah, from like 16, 17 to like probably 19. But you seem so cheerful for someone who had a goth phase. I was not good at, I, if I could keep my mouth shut, I looked really menacing, very menacing. And then, and, but my friends were always like, can you shut up when we're out? Because we look a certain way. And then I was like, hey guys, what are you doing? Anyone else get a drink? Anybody want to dance? Hi, nice to meet you. And they were like, so I looked like I was gonna murder somebody, and the second this started working, I lost all credibility. We have to take a quick break, uh, but stick around. We'll be right back with more Melissa McCarthy.